Hey y'all, this is the Beyond the Dojo podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Jeremiah. And we're actually so far along that we just had to look up what episode number we're on because um, I couldn't remember. This is episode 18. Yes. Welcome back. Um, we have been discussing shodans and all of the shodani things. Is that a word, shodani? I guess we can just kind of yeah, we, we can we can add like English it's suffixes. Our podcast. We could add whatever word we English want. suffixes to like Japanese words. I think you, I think we're allowed to do that. We make the rules. So uh, we've been talking about shodan stuff for the past few weeks, and it's my podcast. Jeremiah's trying to, now he's trying to make up music. Okay, oh. so um, we've been talking about Shodan stuff for the past few weeks, and we actually had a question come in about, um, you know, we talked about our expectations for Shodan, but we haven't specifically talked about our expectations for uh, Q-Ranks. And I think we discussed this on a podcast, how, um, like, the syllabi are not usually very specific. So I know that I mentioned the first time I ever looked at a syllabus, I was like, what good is this? It doesn't tell you uh, what to actually expect at each Q rank. It just tells you what you actually have to do on exams. To me, that's been frustrating. What do you think? Uh, I never look at it that way. I always saw the syllabus as as a uh, a test guide, not you know yeah. nothing more than that. Um, well, that's kind of weird because like like I mentioned before, in a college syllabus, yeah, they actually tell you like. Yeah. How you're supposed to perf- like how you're supposed to specifically do the things that you're required to do. So yeah, I get that's it. why I'm like, eh, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, so I, we're just gonna kind of go through from 10Q up to 1Q what our expectations are of that rank. Um, Jeremiah and I do not have the exact same view on these things, and for By us, exact, a- I would say we're probably pretty different. <laughs> And that's okay, <laughs> um, but we're able to kind of reconcile those whenever we're testing a person, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it's the only way to put that. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with 10Q. You go first. Uh, for me, it's hands showed on getting through the kata. Mm-hmm. Double-handed blocks. Uh, front stance is a front stance. Oh, wait, 10Q is a uh, white belt. Yeah, Just no. kidding. 9Q. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you start either at way. 10Q. Uh, either way. If your dojo is not weird, it starts at 10Q and it goes <clears throat> to 9Q. So 9Q. Um, either way, it's hands showed on. Mm-hmm. Uh, front stances are front stances. Back stances are back stances. Uh, double-handed blocks so you're not just lazily just putting one hand out for a block um shape is decent and i there has to be some effort shown like they're trying to do it mm -hmm. so i would say one thing that we are not consistent on if you are actually looking for this we do not uh enforce double-handed blocks by 9q we really Uh, get on them after that i think because Line Q is like a white belt with, in our dojo, it's a white belt with a yellow stripe. We only have six belts in our dojo, I think. Yeah, six belts. Yeah, no. And, um, yeah, like we want their front stance, like a front stance in general. I think that the only time where we start to give some leeway there is maybe depending on the age of the student when it comes to really lower ranks, like when they're first starting. That's a good question. Like, you know, age is four to six. How high do you get them ranked up? Well... In our dojo, we pretty much never test someone under the age of six. And right. for someone six years old to test is very rare because right. they just can't physically do the things we're asking. I mean, they, they have to be able to do what's on the syllabus. If they right. can't actually do what's on the syllabus, I'm not going to test them. Right. If they can't get through all of Hayon Shodan, I'm not going to test them. Right. Just, I just don't think that they're ready yet. So, yeah. So, like, all of Hayon Shodan, front stance, back stance, horse stance. Um, we do um, the four basic blocks and knife hand block. Front kick and side snap kick. Yeah, That's you just it, right? you just listed out a um, a list of a syllabus. You didn't tell what to look for. Yes, I know, but <laughs> at that rank, they have to just be able to do it. So. Right. So the basic, simple, understand the sequence and mechanics of the techniques. You know, palm down when you're punching, palm up for pulling hand. Basic, basic concepts or principles you're instilling at the very beginning to show that they know the difference between one technique and another technique. Right. Exactly. One so if you move on to the next test, which is with me, would be hand knee down. Eight Q. Yep. Eight Q. And uh, there, there should now be an introduction of some hip action, some kind of rotational hip action. Uh, both still having double handed blocks, still having back stances. Good. Um, well, the obviously the new techniques with the roundhouse and side snap and stuff. They, they don't do a roundhouse on AQ. You know, on the on know. our old syllabus, yes, I know, but okay. But I'm well, talking about introduction, new new techniques. Yeah. So. So in our dojo, with when they're testing for AQ, they add in like side thrust kick. 
Set their cook skip. Yeah, set side thrust kick, and then they have all the other same techniques. And there's not really anything too much different about the actual exam. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, they have to be able to start to show like uh, if they're front kicking or punching, they're in showman. If they're blocking, we would like to start to see them in hominy. Yeah. That's like that's probably the epitome of what we would be looking for. Right. Um, and then their technique has to be a little bit cleaner. Stances have to be a little bit cleaner. But yeah. we're obviously not expecting perfection at that rank. There has to be obvious progress from one stage to the other. Basically. Yeah. There, um, and then now the progress doesn't have to be the same for everybody. See, I, this is where we disagree because I yeah. think that there's a standard and it's black and white and yeah. you either reach that point or you don't. And I don't believe that. I believe that if you're making an improvement and let's say, let's just say this hokey idea that this kid has horrible coordination. Uh-huh. And his techniques are always out of time and everything else. But he, he's, he's got good condition. So he, he's good stances, good movement, tries hard. Um, am I going to keep him back because his the timing of his technique's off? Probably not. Not right now. Yeah. You know, um, but by fifth cue, by fifth or fourth cue, yeah, they better have better coordination by then. Yeah, well, it, it, yeah, like you said, it depends on the rank, like what yeah. the expectation is of that yeah, rank, exactly. I guess. Yeah, um, exactly. And then there are exceptions, too, because there are some people that are just, I hate to say it, morbidly obese and, and completely out of shape, and by their first belt test, they're not going to, they don't have the strength to hold a good stance or do a good kick, you know? Or they're really skinny and they don't have the strength because well, they have plenty of that. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm just saying, like, it's it's one or the other where it's, they're super out of shape. Yeah. Now you got to take that in consideration, mm-hmm. yeah? Um, I will say for me personally, though, fifth cue is the line I draw, Mm -hmm. where if they're not close to that, like, that ideal shape, form, movement, and everything. Can we wait till we get to fifth cue? Okay. We're, like, jumping ahead here. We're still on, like, yellow belt. I forgot. You want to manage? I forget. Whatever, man. Trying to make this, like, digestible for people. They might be taking notes. We might be, like... You know, don't take super so masters, seriously, super. Don't, don't take they're just so like seriously, bro. Taking, it's just they're, a conversation. They're, we're creating like textbooks through our words. You're no. welcome. No. Okay, so in, in, we in don't our, think about ourselves that way. I just want to clear the air. We do not think do. about ourselves that way. I do. Well, obviously, someone has an ego. <laughs> so in, in our dojo, eight Q is yellow belt. Yeah. Um, and then um, after that, we go for orange belt. So that would be um seven Q. Seventh Q. Hand, so, uh, hand stand on. Yeah. So you going for hand stand on. At 7Q, a little bit more um, consistency in stances. Yeah. The biggest thing at this point, I think, is we start to look for being able to actually hold a stance. So not just get into it, yeah. but to be able to actually hold, hold it. it. for a long period of time. Absolutely. Well, Keep the knee bent. During during like a technique. And um, this is the first rank where we start to add in like reverse techniques. So like reverse yeah. punches. Yeah. Not not like stepping reverse punch. They usually do that before now. But, but um, like they'll do block like, reverse punch. Stuff yeah. like that, where you have to rechamber your hand. Mm-hmm. Um, that's definitely the rank where we were like, "Hey, it's got to be exact. It's got to be right on." Yeah. No, I think that'd be the next rank. Wait. So we're at orange belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my they're, bad, so my they're bad. just learning. They're just yeah, they're learning just getting, reverse. Getting the, getting it the down. Then the next rank hand yon down. It should be down pat. It should be pretty much like yeah. they should be able to do the coordination of the technique. And and that's a big hurdle though. The co- coordination to do that is, is a big step in a person's karate life. Yeah. I'd say it's one of the first ones. Yeah. Well, the big thing, too, is like, so I'm saying this because we had an incident with this recently. If we have an expectation for one rank, like, say, you know, for 6Q, they're supposed to be better at the coordination. They're supposed to be able to, like, do a block reverse punch and then use the correct arm when they step forward when they're changing. That was a requirement on their previous exam. By this exam, it should be even better. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's the same or worse than their previous exam, that's grounds for failing the exam yeah. because well, that's a that's a serious thing that you're actually working on for that rank in let, our let's, eyes. Let's say, let's take that into account too. Also, our syllabus repeats itself over several different Q ranks. Yeah, and it makes it easy for us to see progression. Yeah. Yep. So I'll give it to that that you know that system has its benefits, mm-hmm. but it has its faults also because you know. I, I think it should be a little bit more varied. That's all. Well, I think so, too. And I, I think that's one thing, you know, I think we've talked about we're going to revisit our syllabus yeah. and maybe change yeah. a few things. Like when I was growing up, um, we always early on, I, by at least Orange Belt, we were doing um, like double block, double um, punches. So like step in, punch, reverse punch, mm-hmm. which is not on our syllabus. Um, so I, I would like to see that because I think it's a good learning tool before you get to like Sanbanuki and stuff. 
So um, that was 6Q. So in our in our dojo, that's orange belt with one green stripe. So then by 5th Q... Oh, no, let's, let's still oh, talk about 6Q and the kata. Okay. So hey, it's on down the rotation. The Yondan. Big, the big horse, horse rotation. And then Yondan. The, uh, huh? Yondan. Uh, 6Q is Yondan. We're talking about 6Q still, right? 7th Q is Sondan. Ah. Uh, wanted to mention on 7th Q for Sondan. Mm-hmm. It's big to know that they could do the turn in hand Sandan yeah. and hit their mark. Yeah. And then the last move where they do that shuffle or the yodiyashi where they slide their feet, mm-hmm. it's a slide and not a hop. <laughs> yeah, but how many students actually get that down? They, A lot of them don't get it down, but you can tell they they understand the concept and are trying to do it. Yeah. They're just, they, they can't have the, co- they don't have the coordination to not pop their other foot. Yeah. So. Essentially with kata especially, I mean, it's more than just knowing the moves. It has to obviously be a better performance than you would have done at like white belt level. But, right. but the way that your kihon progresses, your kata technique should progress the same way. Because it's the same moves in some cases. So um, obviously just, you know, side side note, we always tell our kids like you cannot perform your hand shodan the way that you did at a white belt when you're a green belt. It's got to look like a green belt hand shodan, not a yeah, white belt hand shodan. Exactly. So if we ever pull out another kata, a lower rank kata, which we will on occasion do with a student, they have to be able to show us a progression in that lower rank kata also. And it's it's not often that we do that. It's usually if either we know a student has been slacking or there was something that was missing from their higher rank kata and we want to see them show us that in, yeah. in a lower rank kata, then we'll do that. But it's been maybe once every third yeah, it's exam. It's a teaching tool, not, more, not a disciplinary tool. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. we're not trying to embarrass anybody. Yeah. All right, so hand yondan. Okay, that's six Q. Yep. Six Q. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's the coordination because of the ki point. Yeah. Um, and then the back fist, uh, back fist side snap kick, elbow strike, shift to back fist side snap kick. Mm. That whole section there shows a lot to me. Yeah. If they can keep their hips level, if they're able to get their knee up, if the back fist and side snap kick is timed somewhat correctly, mm-hmm. um, and they can drive their elbow into into that technique instead of kind of falling and flapping into it, mm-hmm. um, is a big deal to me. So I almost have a heart attack every time a student starts hand sandan with an augmented block instead of an inside block, Dude. or they do the ki point in hand yondan with an augmented block instead of an inside block, I'm like, I don't know who taught you that, but I will cut your arm off at the level of your elbow if you do that again, because I see it all the time. I don't know where they're getting it from. It's like they watch each other. I, I know that you don't teach them that. <laughs> I have no idea, but it's like a running joke in our dojo that like, I'm going to chop your arm off if you keep doing that, yeah. because they will not stop doing augmented blocks in the wrong places. <laughs> Anyway, that's just a side note. So I don't, yeah. ex- I don't want to see that on an exam. Yeah. Um. So now fifth Q. So that's green belt level. Yep. Which is and where we start a whole other. Hand go down, right? Hand go down. Yep. Yep. So for me, hand go down is like the pinnacle of all the hands. Okay. Um. It's a good, just everything has to be on point. You have to understand. Um. More the contrast, the power, and and uh, and grace in a oh. sense. Okay. Um. And then. You know, that, that whole move from the X block all the way up to the, the rising X block to the little crazy thing, the, the wrist lock to the... Jeremiah calls it butterfly box. death. It is the butterfly death. Think <laughs> about it. Um, that whole grouping there shows that you could be able to do a technique while you're moving. Okay. So that hammer fist is a half time kind okay, of thing gotcha. for us. Um, and that to me is a big point. Mm-hmm. Land, landing the jump is a big point. Yeah, not falling over. I don't think I've ever seen a student fall over doing that jump, though. I haven't seen any students fall over, but I've seen people slam their feet into the ground so dang hard, (laughs) and I don't understand that. Why would you want to hurt yourself that way? Yeah. But it's a teaching thing. And then the last two moves in the kata, with the the manjuke stand-up switch manjuke thing, Um, to me that is just getting that whole pattern down Mm -hmm. and the turns and knowing how to time your hands and everything is a representation of that kata and Mm -hmm. that level Mm -hmm. where the coordination is at that that point it's like an intermediate almost you know advanced kind of feeling Mm -hmm. especially if they could do it with a subtle timing you know on that note it seems to me that the ending portions like the ending four moves of all hand katas they're either difficult on purpose or they're just difficult for people, for students to like grasp mm-hmm. because that's usually where the most mistakes are made. And maybe it's because they don't practice that as much. On a on a 9Q exam, we will on occasion allow a student to slide, particularly a, a young student, if they miss like a single move 
or if they get their our hands and feet backwards on the knife hand walks because those are, are a little bit complicated. That's on occasion, but if it's something severe, we're not going to let them slide. Right. By the time they're at green belt level, though, that doesn't slide anymore. Right. Like That's... hand yon on hand go on, you have to know the whole kata all the way through. You cannot make mistakes in yeah. the sequence. Um, I will also say that's slide. That's a sliding rule too. Mm-hmm. Generally, as they get closer to fifth Q, you know, yeah. it gets less and less slack. But at the very beginning, you know, we do understand that it's their first test. It, it's a it's an ordeal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an ex- um, it's an experience. Yeah, that you're not expected. So there's a lot more to overcome. Yeah, and I'm I'm more understanding at that level. Yeah, green belt to me, fifth Q is like okay. You stuck around long enough. You want to be good at this. Let's mm-hmm. let's get serious. So you know what? There we actually um, didn't really talk about uh, Kamite up to this point. Yeah. But um, so let's let's kind of run over nine Q to six Q Kihon Kamite. So um, it's all the same. Yep. Pretty much, they're just doing five step. Mm-hmm. So one person attacking face, one person attacking stomach. Um, we have not implemented um, attacking uh, with a front kick and doing down block. Um, we're we're still kind of working on teaching better coordination with down block to students so they don't break each other's arms and legs because we have you, I have seen so many issues in the past with doing that technique. Um, the other thing is that the syllabus that I grew up with, we went from five step to three step to one step and we haven't done three step. Not that it really makes a big difference, but you just have a less amount of time to, mm-hmm. to show that you know what you're doing. So there's a very gradual pr- progression there. If they're actually um, age six or younger, uh, which, like I said, is rare, then we're actually not going to make them do Kiyo no, Kamite on their exam um, just because we don't generally have the time to cover it in class. Uh, there's just no way to get to that. Plus, they also don't have the maturity to be able to handle no. it. We spend so much time just trying to to, to drill Kihon and the pattern of the kata into their head that going yeah. to me, they well, just wouldn't that, happen. At that rank, it really doesn't. It doesn't have any significance in my opinion. Yeah, it's you're um, kind of you really you're shapes. still trying to figure out how to do things. You're mm-hmm. not trying to perfect it or improve your your timing and distance. Mm-hmm. Um, but by fifth Q, you know. But older kids and adults at nine Q, you oh, know, yeah. they're they're right. they can do they can just do it in general. Like we we expect them to announce their target. We want them to announce it. We want the other person to respond. Right. We want there to be like a communication going on there. So they're learning verbal communication before they eventually go into something that's a little bit less verbal. Um, and then once we start getting toward like 8Q, 7Q, 6Q, then there's more of an understanding of like distance, of how to distance, throw in a counter punch. Yeah. Targeting, mm-hmm. timing, uh, counters, mm-hmm. all that. You know, we drill that into them. Yeah. That it has to be somewhat correct. Yeah. Um, does it have to be on time? Does it have to be perfectly distanced? No, but there's also a sliding scale for that too. Yeah. All right. All right. So now we're at 5th Q. So Kihon at 5th Q is where it's different because yeah. there's no more like stand like reverse punching. Well there is some reverse punching. Yeah. But there's there's other techniques now. Yeah, there's so maybe more like combos a... introduced. So we do we start to introduce one and two technique combos. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean two I'm and sorry, three. two two and three technique combos. Yep. Um and we expect them to show proper mechanics and proper drive and posture and everything else. Yeah, it just we we want the techniques to look like they're being done correctly because because exactly. you have to be able to maintain a stand if you're doing like rising block back leg front kick, you have to be able to maintain a stance while you're now doing a rising block and instead of a reverse punch now you're doing a front kick you're still getting a, a hip rotation but you're doing a front kick as the reverse technique instead of right. a punch so does your stance still have the same um, strength to it are you still able right. to hold that well and it plus it shows the ability to um, maintain connection yeah throughout the technique and not you know. I think a lot of people struggle with, particularly that that technique where their upper body will lose it when mm-hmm. they're trying to kick, and that's yeah. kind of what we're looking for is that introduction of upper body, lower body coordination and, and connection and control and control. I mean, yeah. it's that's where it starts. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. why we the the combos are introduced. Yeah. And so the kumite at fifth Q is. Um, I think that's the first time we do one step. It is one step. So um, that is a little scary for pe- for people. Um, normally, by that rank, you don't have as many um, other students of the same rank. So sometimes you're rank- you're paired up against higher rank. But if they are paired up against each other, it still is kind of intense because you have one person just doing one attack. And now we're not usually we haven't had our students only step straight backwards. They're also learning how to sidestep. So they may be stepping back at like forty five degrees, making sure that they 
they use a block that somewhat works. We're still a little bit robotic with this. We, we say, okay, you know, if you're going to step to one edge, then you would use inside block or outside block. So that way they understand what actually works before we let them have free reign on yeah, what techniques that, they choose. That's a teaching method and not a standardized thing, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying like, to, to prepare them for that, that's kind of the route yeah, that we take. Yeah, so they're not... Absolutely. Because I, I have sat on exams well, where, where we did one step and we did not know what to do. Like, yeah. we stood there and for Kion Kamite and we're just like, once we're like, what one, is one step? One step to me is also the introduction to strategy. For ki, one, one step Kion Kamite? One step Kion sparring, yeah. Yeah. It's the one, you know where they're doing it. Um, you have to take advantage of, you know, yourself. Like you said, the shifting and stuff, stuff like that. Sometimes that, that's introduced there just so that you have better strategy, tactics. You know? Well, it's more placement because they're not moving around. Well, it's just... to me, it's... You said it. You hit it on the head when you said, well, sometimes you do an outside form block or an inside form block. Yeah. Well, that depends on the person. Okay. And, and the strat and the, the way they see or conceptualize what they're doing. Okay. And that, to me, is a strategy. Okay. I'm having a hard time calling it strategy because it's like a one. It's like one thing. But I get what you mean. Yeah. But you have to strategize for that one move. Yeah. You yeah. That makes sense. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Know, let's go ahead and hit me. Yeah. Well, you know, it's got to be. A, there's got to be an idea. Yeah, and I think that's part of it. So fourth Q. Yep. In our dojo is a green belt with one brown stripe. So we go from green belt um, through up to brown belt after this. So uh, green belt, uh, green belt with a brown stripe. So their exam is kind of like the orange belt, orange belt, green stri- belt stripe or green stripe thing, where it's like a repeat of the same exam. That's how this exam is for green belt. So it's like a green belt test and then like green belt test number two (laughs) so they're kind of repeating the same exam we expect um where there may have been flaws in kihon in the first exam those are usually cleaned up a little bit by now um like we had a student that um let's see was he testing for oh he was testing for green belt actually um so also completing techniques that's why we held him back um, we want to see techniques completed. So especially now that we're introducing more combos, especially by testing for fourth cue, you know, draw hands got to pull all the way back. Technique has to be completed before moving on to the next technique in a combo. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at this point, we're still not really looking at necessarily power production or even speed. I mean, it, it, should, it shouldn't be like grandpa status, but it should be, you know, just fl- flowing together. It should basically. be fluid. It should be yeah. very smooth, but well coordinated. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And um, I don't think we introduced really anything new. I mean, by this point, they've already learned roundhouse kick. We introduced yeah. roundhouse yeah. kick before um, before Orange Belt, yeah. before uh, Seventh Q. Um, and I think they're just in, they're, just, they're just doing combos now at this point. Yeah, adding combos, learning how to shift, um, learning to hit every stance and not just blow through them. Right. There are shifting techniques on their keyhole now. So they're maybe shifting from front stance to horse stance or from, from back stance to front stance in the combo. So they have to be able to show us that they can do those, particularly by this rank, because what I always tell students is, in Heon Godon, at the very end, you're shifting from back stance to front stance or whatever. You have to show me that also in Kihon. You have to be able to show me that you can do one stance and the other within a short time frame, and it look like that stance. Right. So for fourth cue, the kata is techie. Yep, techie shodan. That's what we do. All right, so what I normally do with my my students and my, my homeschoolers was, they before they got taught techie shodan, mm-hmm. they had to perform hand shodan through hand godan for me, mm-hmm. and I had one question for them. I would name a number mm-hmm. and a kata, mm-hmm. the number move whatever, and they'd have to tell me by word what I was doing. So let's say uh, number two move and hand shodan. Okay. They'd have to say right hand punching, right leg forward front stance. Okay. And without doing it, without um, having to kind of like go through the moves, they had to do it in their head. To be able to go through the, go through the kata in their head. And in their head and know point. what's going on and, and know where the moves are. Know the kata that well. So he's not saying they have to memorize the number of each move, which we know some people who do that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but we're not, not doing saying, that. I'm just saying they should know the kata well enough to that when I ask them, hey, what what's this move? They should be able to tell me what, they, what it is without yeah. having to do it. Yes, and that's before you teach them Techie Shodan. Yeah, that's before you learn the first, you know, your Techie Shodan. Okay, and and he's doing that because obviously Techie Shodan is, I think, considered the first black belt kata. It's a it's a, sh- it's a Shodan level kata. That's what we were always told. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how everybody can, how everyone else looks at it, but as I, far as I know, no. I thought it was gr- a group I've, A. No, it's always been brown belt kata. Okay. For so. 
whatever. Okay. Either way. Whatever. So anyway, so they're learning Tekishoran, and um, that's what they test with to get to fourth Q. Um, honestly, we just want them to be able to get in a horse stance and have some control. The problem with this kata and, and controlling the stance is that you are now having to take a, a fairly dynamic kata and put the upper half of your body on top of a stance that doesn't give. And it will give because you're trying to learn to coordinate your hip rotation with the small amount of space that you have to move. So we do give some leniency there. We don't expect them to be completely stationary in their lower body, but that is obviously the goal. If they were, if they were on point, they would their hip their knees would hold still as their hips rotate. I, I think the best adjective for techie shutdown and what we're looking for is staunch, staunch in your Kinda, stance, yeah. staunch in your technique. Yeah. Um, not powerful, but just sharp and crisp mm-hmm. with proper body movement. You know what's interesting was whenever I learned that kata, we did not do we didn't hit, rotate our hips at all. We didn't learn any kind of hip rotation. I did, we didn't know that it was a thing. We thought it was just like a like an upper body kata, yeah. so, which it's not. You're supposed to be able to coordinate rotating your hips yep. and shoulders. but And then learning, like you said, learning how to rotate your hips in such a small um, range of motion. degree of rotation. Yeah. You know, is it's hard. People can't coordinate it sometimes. Yeah. And first thing that happens, your stance falls apart. Knees give, yep. Okay, so now the big one. So now um, third cue in our dojo is brown belt, which I think in most dojos it's brown belt yeah, level. Yeah, brown belt. Um, we'll start with, um, I'll we'll start with Kihon. So, uh, the Kihon is like, I think slightly more advanced than it is at. Just barely. Not, not yeah. much. There's like a, there, there might be like a couple of, of three technique combos now instead yeah, of two but, technique combos. But nothing's, nothing, um, spectrum shifting like in, in uh, fifth Q. Yeah. Fifth and fourth Q where it was just a major shift there. And third Q is not as much. You're doing the same concepts, but it's more detailed. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. Third, second, and first Q is called the grind. That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Everything to me has to be absolutely exact. Well, let's talk about what the everything is. So we talked about, um, you know, you, we start introducing hip rotation by eighth cue yeah we start introducing coordination of the hands and their hip rotation by like seventh sixth cue yeah by fifth cue they're doing multiple techniques and trying to coordinate hips and hands right. now we're at brown belt level this is where i would i want them to be conscious of the fact that they have a back leg <laughs> so i don't right. expect them to be able to completely use it yet but by this point We've explained that whenever your hips are in hominy, your back leg, sh- your back knee should be flexed. When your hips are in showman, it's slightly more extended, even though it's never going to be completely locked out. Yeah. Um, so we want to start seeing a little bit of that um, yeah, on this exam. That. I agree with you there. Um, for me, it's every stance is exactly right. Every stance. So you're like f- the same, you mean? Uh, no. Uh, foot alignment, knee alignment, hip alignment. Sh- uh, posture everything about the stance is like dead on and this song cue for me is where it's at where they actually have a good front stance a good horse stance okay back stance i think that's debatable (laughs) i'm not saying that it shouldn't be but i think that we have students that didn't haven't reached that quite yet and they're past that point there's still things that they're working on in stances and just because you know the the strength to be able to actually get in a front stance that's low enough for it to be like what would be considered an actually correct stance. Uh, Depends on what you consider a front stance. Okay. If you're still looking at the shapes, then yeah, you have to bend your knee and make a deep low stance. I don't look at it that way. I look at it as pressure forward and how well you can control your pressure forward i.e. the back leg driving so and stuff ju- like that. So you just want the the general positioning? No, positioning of the feet, knees, and hips have to be absolutely on point. Okay. Does that, if that makes any sense to you. I, on San Q, I want their lower half of their body to be pretty pretty good, like pretty yeah, sharp. But what do you mean by that? Uh, stances, the way they move from stance to stance, how they keep their hips level, um, those kind of things. I don't want to see major issues. I don't want to see them step in front stance and go to a step and punch and see them stand up six inches halfway through and then squat back down. So it's more like controlling those joints. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to ask, figure out what you're considering to be an actual issue. That way all right, like, all right, it's clear because so yeah, you're saying you want it on your point. Lower body. Yeah. So not only in the stances but in kicks also okay. where it's basically coordinated correctly. It might not, or 
you could see the sections or or pieces of it correctly. Okay. Um, but you know, a lot of people are like, oh, brown belt's super powerful, and not for me. I no. think brown belt for me is is more precise and more like nitpicky. Um, you know, if you're leaning if you're leaning in your stances, I I'll correct you. If your hickey day or your pulling hands kind of weak, I'll correct you. I think in general, that's what if we're gonna look at like a gradual progression overall. Overall, we're looking for an increase in precision, right? Yeah. In technical precision, mechanical precision, from from white belt up to right. to black belt. Ability. Yeah, we we want to see them doing things more precisely, not necessarily increasing power. But we talked about that in the shodan one. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about uh, kamite at um, at brown belt level. Uh, it should be well timed. The block should be on on time. That means. Uh, not so early that they're halfway with their punch, but not so late that you're getting hit in the face, obviously. Okay. Um, it should have the right effect. The mm. hand, the attacker in hand should be bouncing off the block, not getting pushed around. Yeah. This is, a. Uh, we're still doing one, I can't remember now. Are we doing one step at Yeah, one Q? step's right here. Just regular. Yeah, it's we're one still, step. still doing um, one step. Jodan, Jodan, Maigeti. Um, oh yeah, so we added more techniques. That's yeah, what it is. My, so we're still doing one step kihon kumite. Yeah. So not semi free, like but kihon kumite. So the the attacker is stationary and then they attack. But we're doing like face, stomach, stomach front kick, kick, roundhouse, and then maybe and either then a thrust kick or a spinning back to kick. EQ, it's a spinning back kick. Okay, so so that's so that's kumite. So yeah. we just want to see them be able to block those additional techniques and block Absolutely. them well. Um, and then when you're you're attacking, you're when you land your step. It should be in a correct alignment to your 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 opponent. It, it you know it should be on the outside edge, and your knees should be closed, and your mm-hmm. your attack should be within you know quarter an inch or closer. Yeah. Um, it should be sharp. Yeah. You should have control of that. Mm-hmm. You know, and like when you get blocked for a front kick in Kion Kumite, mm-hmm. you shouldn't fall over yourself because you got blocked. Yeah. Your leg gets blocked, but you control yourself and you step forward. Those are the kind of things we're talking about where oh, it's okay. like another level of control. Yeah. You know? Um, and also with the blocks, they have to be deflective mm-hmm. in a sense and not not uh, bashing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's that's progression in, in kumite, you know? Mm-hmm. So then kata for brown belt level, because we, in our dojo, we try to give them one new kata per rank to make it more interesting. Um, we have them do basadai. Yep. At this point, um, I obviously would not expect a brown belt to do Basadai like they were a black belt, but we want to see that the obviously the techniques are correct, yep. and because they're continuing to progress their kihon, their Basadai should start to see some of that also. All the, that the, shifting and rotation and everything mm-hmm. else. The big thing with Basadai is that you know, now you start to have like this reverse hip rotation more prevalent. Yeah. So now you have another type of rotation. So in in Teki, it was like very small. You didn't have a big range of motion. Now in Basadai, it's a huge range of motion but you have to be able to control your stance through it so it's still another control thing like re- coordinating your upper half with a strong lower half yeah um to I, me a very dynamic kata a pet peeve of mine is um poor back stances especially on the way up to the first oh, yeah. uh kiai yeah, like, i, I really can't that stand one. that well honestly all four of them but it's particularly the last two I, you know, just take. I would rather see someone take their time and do the stances correctly. I know that back stance is like the hardest stance that Shotokan does, but I still would like to see like a, a good solid back stance. I, even though people look at Basadai as like a power kata, I, I still think that um, your technique is the most important part of it. So. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I I used to see look at Basadai and go, yeah, it's a power kata, but now I look at it and go, it's a dynamic kata. I mean, yeah, with so much range of movement oh, yeah. and range of motion and. Mm-hmm. You know, Standing up, going low. I mean, it's all there. And to mm-hmm. me, it's, you know, just a very dynamic kata. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, toward the end, like I've seen this with a, a couple students, is um, if they're struggling with, um, like, those weird, whenever we're going into, um, what is it called? Yamazuki. Yamazuki. When you're going into Yamazuki, if you can't do the front stance correct and have the hip position yeah, correct, they can't I, do the Yamazuki. I, I feel like that's not really doing the kata correctly. Yeah. You, you have to be able to at least, in general, have your hips in harmony and have your hands in the right spot. Because for some students, it just it's really awkward. Like, you're turning your body sideways and falling on yourself and whatever. Yeah, but so I want to see them actually do that right. What I realized is that sometimes it's just a matter of letting them know, hey, you haven't rotated your hip far enough. And literally turn their body or their hips over more, and then all of a sudden they get it, you know? Yeah. I worked with a couple that they just it's more like their stance is wrong their hands aren't in the right spot it's just really awkward for them I know yeah. what you mean 
Um, all right, so now knee cue. So this is where, to me, things get a bit more ambiguous. Because third cue to first cue is like, uh, people have now, now we're getting into more specific things with like body type and, and some of, some of the students are athletic. Some of them are not athletic and we're heading towards Shotokan, which is the pinnacle. And we have this stand, Shodan, I mean, <laughs> whatever that is, <laughs> we're headed towards Shodan and, um, we, we want to see, you know, a solid, you have to pass that threshold in order to be able to make Shodan. So, so now the path Niku, becomes a bit more personalized, I guess. Yeah, actually, for me, it, it's a little bit different, actually. Okay. Because <laughs> in EQ, I'm actually expecting to see a connection of her body, lower body. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in coordination and timing, but, like, power generation. Yeah. Um, I also like to see understanding, you know, understanding mechanics better. Okay, like back leg stuff? Back leg stuff, posture stuff. Uh Keeping the elbow tight, but not by squeezing the elbow, but by rotating the forearm. For those kind of things. Keeping thing. the shoulders down. Um, and at that level, and I hate to say this because it's not, you can't test it on test day. Mm -hmm. But at that level, I should be able to make a two word correction to you. Mm -hmm. And you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because by then, we've coached you up so much that you should yeah. know the, the, the tendencies of the words and phrases we're using. Mm -hmm. And they should be able to easily correct themselves. Mm hmm. If they have, they lack that ability, I'm very timid. I, I don't even want to test them. Well, so you talk about um, all of the standard, all the stuff that you said for expectations, I agree with. The only thing that I think is a start, that we're starting to coach them on is by now, every student has a habit, yeah. at least one, and yeah. we're trying to break that. So now we're trying to see not only a progression in their general karate, we're trying to see a progression out of bad habits. Because, right. like, think about the, the brown belts that we've had in our dojo and, like, the ones that are it, testing, I getting ready for showdown. I think it's the best, best way of saying it, the ability to be coached. Yeah, well, ability to be coached, but, I mean, b by the time they're testing for the next rank, we want to see a little bit less of whatever that habit was oh, because yeah. we're trying to get yeah, rid of it. There has so, to be. So this is where I'm saying it's more personalized okay. because there is a certain standard that they're now, like, the, the, the improvements are smaller and smaller as far as, like, the general coordination, the general mechanics besides back leg stuff because I think that's really difficult. Yeah. See, but, but now we're trying to get into the nitty-gritty things that they specifically have to work on. And for me, I look at that in a different way. I don't look at it as like more personalized. I actually look at it as that's just, you know, it's like a chart. This is what the, the karate is supposed to look like, but you're missing this part or that part. So that part is, you know, that pie piece is out of there. It's still the same thing. It's just different pie pieces for everybody. Well, as an example. Right. But I'm testing for an ideal. Yeah. And I'm driving them to one ideal, not to different individual yeah, 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 no, you know I, I get that. That's, I get that's that. That's how that's how I look at it. It's not being customized compared to uh, nine, eight, seven. Yeah. Q, what I mean I'm a is bit more lenient that way. What I mean is, yes, we're driving them toward that, and for yeah. some students, it may be like personalizing them more toward that. Yeah. For some students, we're weeding stuff out. Think of our brown oh, no, belt that. that turtles his neck. Yeah, no, I when get, he goes a I step totally forward. get it. Yeah. I totally get that, and I agree with you. I just don't look at it as being more personalized. I look at it as like. That's part of the grind. That's part of the process. Okay, whatever. You know, I don't see it as personalized. Um, to me, personalized is like accepting, accepting a, a slightly different technique or a slightly oh no 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 I don't mean that. I mean a personalized because because of a limitation or inability to do it. No, no, I mean, I mean, I'm personalizing the way that I'm coaching them. Oh uh, no, no, okay. The, no, what, I, what the corrections I am specifically giving are more personalized see, to I, that I, student. I personally coach. I start to personal coach people orange belt. I know, I that's, do too. But that's I mean, where I, started. I mean, oh, we are okay. trying to get rid of habits by this point. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Anybody listening out there? I think we're arguing the same point of view. Just want to put out. But there. we're saying different words, okay? Different Women are words. from Anyways, wherever, and men are from. Let's move on. That was Jupiter. The last two minutes. Okay, so <laughs> Kamite at this point is, I think, I think now we're getting into semi free, right? So one step uh, semi free or no? Yeah. Or is this one? Uh, that is what is, was on the syllabus that we used, and and let's just talk about what we've done up to this point. Up to this point, we really haven't tested anybody. On that. Well, we we we've used it on tests to see how people work with it, but in reality, I I tend to step away from that uh, jilipon just because I feel like it's easier to teach it in, in sparring 
and Chukubite. Oh, uh, we did use it on um, uh, the brown belts. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he just did yeah, it from and, and it just didn't... Honestly, the, the points we were trying to get across and the concepts that we were teaching did not show through at all. Then turn around and you put them in a free sparring situation. Yeah, but let's not rant about. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. We yeah. talked about this. Oh my bad. Well, I mean, so what are we actually expecting though? I mean, what is the what's the concept you're trying to get across that you want them to show that this is not? Well, I just want to make sure show. that people don't think that we're doing a, a chewy bone thing when we tend not to. That's all. I'm, I'm gonna say this: that is a part of our syllabus and that part of our testing where we're not concrete yet. Yeah. We're not absolutely, that, that's a good point to make also, is that we talk like this is all concrete. Reality is, through experience and just doing it yeah. over and over again, that's how we know what we're looking for. Yeah. And, you know, every dojo, every sensei is going to be slightly different in how, what they believe is important, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. And also, he and I are coming from pretty different backgrounds because you yeah. ran your own dojo. You ran your own dojo for years. I helped, you know, with testing in our dojo, right. and then gradually took over. And my expectations were totally different. I used to be really, really hard on the younger ranks, so our yellow belts and orange belts looked amazing if they actually passed. But now I'm like, okay, well, there are standards we're supposed to be going for, but not everything is supposed to be perfect yet. Right. So, like, there's a little bit of and, uh, that's gray a good point to make. There. Also, is I spent many years teaching, testing, and doing everything by myself mm-hmm. at that dojo. Yeah, and it taught me a lot of things, like yeah. what I what I know to be my personal best or best way. Of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's part of it that has never got, <laughs> let's be real, in this day and age when you have a really small dojo, it's really hard to get a lot of people up to brown belt. Oh, yeah. And to show it on level to where it's actually this part of the testing, it becomes <laughs> like concrete. So it's hard to, for us to know exactly, exactly what, we're what we're looking, looking for, for at each of those three ranks prior to showdown. Yeah. So at this rank, so one student, we had tests with MP at this point. Yeah. The next group of students are about to test with Gion at this point. I don't remember why. I think I just got confused about what's Kawakata I was going to teach them next. Um, but essentially, we're kind of looking for the same things with Basadai. It's, it's just the techniques should be there. Um, we want Now we're, want, we're wanting the elements of the kata to be there. And that's in every case. But particularly now that we're getting into yeah. black belt level katas, we want the general elements of the kata to be there. Yeah. So um, obviously good basics, good mechanics, good, you know, whatever. Absolutely. Um, but then the ability to put it together and, and yeah. represent the, the idea of what the kata is. Like Gion to me is a crisp kata. Yeah. It's sharp. It's very crisp, you know? Yeah. Compared to... Which is different from Baisadai, because Baisadai is really dynamic to me, but not crisp. Yeah, well, the turns are different. So the turns in, in Gion are full body turns that are right. really tight on a front leg, right. and the turns in Baisadai are more like giant hip rotation, hip rotation mawash, stuff, uh, exactly. mawate type turns. So, um, yeah, so those those definitely are different. But yeah. if they're done correctly, then the elements of the kata are there. So you oh, don't really absolutely. have to add anything. You yeah, just you do the kata correct. Yeah. So well, it's just hard for us to keep saying, we just do it correctly. Well, you just do. You just do it correctly, and the elements of the kata are right. there. Same thing if it's empty. Biomechanically correct. Yeah, so if you don't know what that is, well, sorry. We can't really help you that, with this yeah, on, the, on I mean, the audio. That, that's <laughs> being able to coordinate every segment correctly, timed well, and then driven with the proper power-producing muscles. Sure. Without Power. any antagonistic movement. Well. Ideally. Ideally, Ideally. yes. <laughs> um, so now EQ. So EQ is another one that's definitely a gray area because this is where we're like, eh, technically you can test for Shodan already because in a lot of organizations, by the time you're in EQ, you can actually test for Shodan, supposedly. I mean, that's what I've been told. But so by EQ, we want to see things be almost at Shodan level. So, you know, Stances are dang close to being what we're expecting from you. You know, there's, they are dynamic. They are actually supporting your movement. Um, we're, we've gotten rid of some of these extraneous habits. Um, See, I look at EQ like a performance thing. So okay. maybe you're saying the same thing, but I look at EQ as like on their test, they better be performing in their 85 percentile or higher. Okay. Of their what I've seen them do, their ability. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. If they if they come in on a test and have a crap day where they're doing, you know, they just have an off day, mm-hmm. they're probably not going to pass with me. Okay. But at EQ, I want them to be performing at a high level. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... You know what I mean? Like, they should be firing all cylinders. 
Um, still have issues, but they should be violent, firing pretty good, you know? By EQ, your your the syllabus is almost identical to what Shodan looks like. Right. It does a couple of variations, but it's a lot more like um, still more double techniques. You have more leg techniques that have two, two, um, com- uh, two techniques in a row, uh, combos that have two techniques in a row. Um, and they have to be able to do them well. So especially <laughs> once the legs get involved, they have to still look like the proper kicks. Um, there's a lot more big body turning. Like that one on the exam where it's like a, what is it, like a side snap kick, step down, turn, side thrust kick. I don't like that technique, but that one is definitely one that's a good yeah. example. Um, you know, still just refinement. I mean, this is, I know this is, this is where I was, like I said, these are the ambiguous ones where yeah. we're kind of not exactly sure. We just know that there has to be a general progression towards Shodan. Yeah. And as long as you know what Shodan looks like, then you can kind of cross-reference as to how that person is going to get there. Yeah. Well, the, the earlier ranks are a little bit easier to tell because we can yeah. just say, like, just learn this thing, learn this thing, learn that, learn that thing. Yeah. So I'll say this too. If you don't know how to set up your standards mm-hmm. man we live in this beautiful age where you just go on youtube right and uh, just yeah. you know, listen just type in belt test whatever q rank whatever and just watch those videos and find the try to find the ones that obviously do your style yeah right that are within your if they're within your circle or organization even better mm-hmm. and see how other people judge yeah and and then Use that as research to help you make a better decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. But don't make a decision just kind of blindly go, oh, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do your research. Well, so here. Other things, too, is talk to the people you network with, other dojo senseis, other people in your organization, and ask them, hey, what do you you see in this rank or that rank? And help them guide you because in reality, they have a lot of influence on your future. Yeah. Especially in an organization. So you might as well conform to those ideas. And remember that we're giving this from our perspective. This is just kind of the way that we've broken it down. And just to also give some background, the way that I mentally, like I have to have everything very systematized in order for me to be able to stay on task, in order to be able to keep my students on task. Yeah. I feel like if I'm not organized, then I can't really teach them well and they can't stay organized because mm. that's how my brain works. So I look at Shodan and I'm like, okay, what are the elements that a Shodan has? Let's break that down into sections. Okay, so at what point do they need to start learning this type of thing? How do we progress to that particular thing that I'm looking for? And I have I have these different pieces that I'm looking for at different ranks only because I know in general what a Shodan is supposed to look like and I know what those right. elements are. Right. So that's you another way of doing point, it. Right? Yeah, using it as a reference point. So if you can if you can take the reference point, break apart the elements and the principles that have to be understood, and then do some regressions of that. So you're kind of working backwards. Mark out those regressions, or they would be progressions at that point. If, mark those out and see, okay, where does this fall along the timeline of a person trying to get ready for showdown? Obviously, that's very like idealistic, like I said, hmm. but. Um, it just gives you a framework to go by that's maybe a little bit more in detail than a syllabus that's telling you what to do on an exam. Or you could be more like me. And just make it up as you go. No. Well, kind of, <laughs> sort kidding. of. Just <laughs> kidding. I know what I'm teaching, and I don't want to, I know what I want to get across to my students, but at the same time, I don't have a systematic approach. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at every student in the class and go, okay, for this class, this subject will benefit the majority of people. Uh-huh. Um, and... I guess the best thing or best advice I would give to anybody is go with your gut instinct. Your gut doesn't lie to you, especially if you're at this point in your karate life where you're teaching students and testing them. Yeah. You've been doing it long enough to kind of know what you need to do. Well, the other thing, though, is if you haven't been doing it very long, because the the person that asked this said that they haven't been doing it for a long time. Okay. If you haven't, it is okay to mess up. That's how we learned. Yeah. It's okay to, like... To change, change yeah to change dude, things. it's okay to change stuff it's okay to, to change emphasis on things yeah it, it's okay to change your technique because you realize you were doing it wrong oops oops but <laughs> that humility and that that honesty with your students are gonna are gonna give you a, a level of respect and admiration that not a lot of people get it, it's kind of crazy sometimes you just have to humble yourself in front of other people and they kind of respect you more yeah so and i'm not saying have a, a test and then at the end of the day be like oh you know what did a horrible thing. None of y'all should have tested. 
I mean, you should know what you're doing. And, no, you know, but somewhat. But but you just you just kind of adjust. So if you oh, tested absolutely. someone up to a rank and you're like, oh crap, I should have made them have this under control before I tested them up. Well, now you just know what to make them, what the requirements are before their next exam. Yeah. So you're allow you're being a little bit more fluid with that person. And like would, on the flip side, like I said, I was too hard on people right. to begin with, right. and it may have turned some people off to it. But um, it. I learned from that and learned how to like space that out a bit more so the students weren't overwhelmed. So like right. I said, learning process. Right. I would uh, I'd also encourage, you know, have a two-way street kind of relationship with your students. Yeah. Be willing to, if you make a mistake, to say, hey, man, I messed that up. My bad. And just move on like no big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, have Willing to have that, you'll see through the relationship where your students are progressing and where they're having issues and it'll be more clear for you to make the decision on those individuals because you kind of invested in them more yeah uh i think the days of standing in front of a class and just counting and saying once more no more hip bend knee all nah, these nah, other nah. you, you know it. stereotypical chants that we've heard all our lives doesn't work anymore you have to connect to these kids, these parents, these adults, teenagers, whatever, and they have to. You have to kind of build this very mutual relationship. Well, you have to think of it too. Is that you're a coach essentially? Yeah, it's a coach. So you're you're not just a teacher. You're actually coaching students along, and that's part of the reason why I feel like having a systematized approach, at least somewhere, right. is is helpful for you to have a reference point so that you can be specific. <laughs> what is it that they have to improve on? You should be able to tell a student specifically why they didn't pass an exam. So if Lauren and I were cooks, she would measure everything out, and I would put a pinch and a dash here and there. I actually don't measure everything out when I'm cooking. I, I, use, my, I use my hand. <laughs> Listen to her. Now she's, a, she's competitive, too. Any, anytime you challenge her, boy. No, I literally like measure no, no, a lot of okay. things in my hand because I'm too lazy to wash the dishes. So I just measured in my hand. <laughs> Anyways, like I'm saying, it was just an example before she <laughs> took it literally. You know, I'm a pinch and dash person. Just add the flavor. You get it right. You'll know when it's pinch right. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, you'll know it when it's right because you sure will know when it's wrong. It'll be quick and obvious. Yes. So if you pass somebody and they weren't, shouldn't have passed, you'll know right away. Yep. You'll regret that one real quick and yep. learn how to adjust. And then you have to figure out how to fix it <laughs> without, like, making them mad at the same <laughs> same time, offending their parents or ah, Well, no, you just you just say, okay, so, you know, this is something that you need to work on. By the time you get to the next rank, this Let's has to be under control. When, when we don't pass people, um, depending on the age, we will normally say, okay, you got to show this, this, and this better by X amount of time, and they, then they will pass you, depending on the age. Uh, well, also on the last exam where we failed four people, mm-hmm. um, we took all of them aside. One was a senior adult, one was a teenager, and two were young kids. Yeah. And we told them specifically what they did incorrectly, incorrectly and we yeah. said, "You can you have a makeup exam on this date. If you can get it done by that date, we will pass you. If right. you can't, you will not test until the next exam." Exactly. But they all got it. I think, right? Yeah. All four of them. Yeah, yeah, they all got it. Um, and it was. We knew we did it with com- we do that with confidence because we know what kind of students they are. Yeah, we know they can do it. We don't ask them to test unless they we know in our hearts they're ba- they have the ability to do it. Yeah, we test them on performance. Yeah, they have to do it that day. They have to do it that day. I I don't. Yeah, I don't recall. I mean, there will be, like I said, young kids. They're testing early early on, like nine Q. They mess something up, very slight. We will let it slide. We'll tell them, hey, you messed up like one move in hand short on. You have to do the kata again in front of the class on Tuesday or yeah, something. Yeah. So we'll d- let that slide, but in general. Yeah. You know. Anyway, okay. So is that it for that? No, yeah, that's it for that, yeah. Okay. What you working on? Um, let's see. Where is that? So after after the weird side snap kick, um, elbow strikes in Sochi. Sochin. And then uh, the knife hand blocks, and then there's the you're, you pivot and go straight again. You're going back to where you started from. Knife hand block, knife hand block, whatever this upside down like spear hand thing is. <laughs> that into the double strike blocky thing that I don't know what it's called. Mm-hmm. And you land in a right fudadach with your right hand out and left hand by your ear. Um, that technique is so weird, so so weird. And I learned it originally one way, and then I was shown another way. And now I'm being told, oh, that's wrong. Just go look at the book. <laughs> so I went and looked at the book. So I have to go over that a bit more and then start working on the next section. So um, Sochin is just, like I said, I think previously, I don't like this kata. 
it's just really odd. Fudodachi is weird. I still don't have that completely under control. So trying to get these really strange techniques under wrap is kind of what I'm working on. You? I had an ear infection most of last week. Mm-hmm. I felt kind of odd, so I didn't get to train as much as I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Worked on Fudodachi. Um, still having an issue with dizziness, so. Yeah. Worked Fudodachi, some side snap, um, and Sochin. I worked on that first rotation, Manjuke to the, the up block, down block thing, to the Tata Shuto, that section there. Manjuke. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, wait, where are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that section there that I've been working on just a little bit because um, the rotation from Fudodachi into back stance mm-hmm. is kind of odd for me. Yeah. I tend to kind of put too much weight and swing my butt out a little bit and it throws me off balance. Yeah. Because when I hit my stance, I feel like I'm way off. Gotcha. So. Okay. That's it. Not much. Not a, not a very heavy training week. Yeah. Still, still a little ill. Yeah. Still congested. But whatever. Cool. Cool. Thanks. All right. Well, that was a long podcast. Sorry. Well, we didn't really have our ducks in a row. We didn't write anything down again, so we kind of argued through that one. But yeah. Hopefully, our op- our opposing points of view gave you multiple ideas to sift through. I just through. hope that you were in- entertained by me. Yep. Because I don't want to add substance to any conversation. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye.